Shining Sea, America's future is determined by more than just what happens in the halls of Congress. Join the conversation on our future now on Breitbart News, Saturday edition. Part News, Saturday edition. Feeling good today. This is Alex Marlowe, back behind the mic after a couple of weeks off. I'm going to turn now to Gene Monahan. Gene is one of the people behind the March for Life, one of the most powerful, I would say, social conservative events of the year. It's coming up this week. Uh, Gene, thank you for coming on the program. Uh, thanks for having me, Alex. Uh, I'm very happy to talk to you. This is a narrative that I personally love because it's one where we're winning. It's a the, – the America is trending more socially liberal in almost every aspect. One element, one aspect, one point of polling data where we're not trending liberal is the issue of abortion. A lot of that has to do – with science, a lot of that has to do with convincing arguments made by people like you. A lot of that has to do with the fact that young people are getting more uh, activated and motivated. And one thing that's so cool about the March for Life is you guys always have so many young people. Yeah, it's 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 just really a beautiful moment. I mean, it, it's very motivating. It's kind of this weird irony that it's you know there's a sadness and a darkness because we've lost so many Americans to abortion over the last 42 years but at the same time there's such a joy and enthusiasm with all the young people I think we're good good 80 percent young people like 25 and under that come to the March for Life wow that is fantastic uh, so tell us about what's going to happen what where it is how people can get involved how they can support it great we'll find you well, perhaps the most important thing is just that your listeners would check out our website, marchforlife.org, and we've got all of the information about the actual rally at March and the periphery events the day before, the night of the march, the morning of the march. But why don't I tell you a little bit, too? Um, the actual rally itself is on the anniversary of Roe v. Wade, Doe v. Bolton. That's January 22nd, this Thursday. It's going to be at 12th Street on the Mall, right by the Smithsonian exit on the Metro. And um, that will be at noon. We've got a phenomenal lineup of speakers for the rally. And then that will end right around 1, and then the march starts as soon as that ends. And the march begins at 14th and Constitution. And I would encourage marchers uh, to get in early into the city because 14th Street will be shut down, Constitution will be shut down. So it, it'll cause a bit of a mess in terms of D.C. traffic, which I think is a great thing for, for life issues. Yeah, so much causes a mess in D.C. traffic, but it's usually some sort of a, a, a half marathon of some sort, right. so I can't get to the driving range on my Sunday off. Uh, but th <laughs> this is a good reason to get stuck in traffic. Uh, so if people want to be supportive, where can they find you online? Is there a place to donate, anything like that? Oh, thanks. Great question. Same, same website, marchforlife.org. And I'll mention to you that we're very, very active in digital media, social media. So we're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Um, very, very active in all of this. And for your listeners who uh, like to do social media, we're encouraging everybody to use the hashtag, hashtag why we march. And to tell a little story about why you march, it's kind of an interesting way to be a discussion starter for your friends, your social media friends, who may or may not be pro-life, and to really tell real stories about why people are pro-life. And so what type of numbers do you think you're expecting? You know, we haven't had a crowd estimate done in many, many years. That's an interesting uh, story about the government and the National Park Service and Million Man March. But we <laughs> think that, <laughs> little side story for another time, we believe that there are hundreds of thousands that come every year. Um, what I can tell you is that um, if you've ever been, once you're getting to the point of the Supreme Court, it's like you're shoulder to shoulder with literally just thousands of people walking. And from the point when you get to the Supreme Court, the first person to the last people, going there, it takes about two hours. And I, when you're marching and you march up Constitution Avenue and right before you get to the Congress, you can kind of turn around and look back. And I'm sure many of your listeners have seen these pictures. There's literally just seas of, of people, and especially young people, as you mentioned before. And you really can't. As far as the eye can see, it's, it's, it's crowds of people. I mean, it's an enormous, enormous march. And thank you for reporting it. And Sirius does an amazing job of reporting it. Um, it's not always adequately reported in the media, in the right. secular media, and so it's exciting that you guys are, are doing this, so thank you. Yeah, but things are working behind the scenes, and we know we can't expect the mainstream media to ever cover abortion, but there really is a sort of a revolution going on, and 
That's right. Yeah. Uh, Sirius has been wonderful on it. Breitbart.com will have reporters there as usual. I'm sure we'll be getting commentary from you and others that day. So what is the key to getting all these young people to show up and all these people in general? Because you're more sophisticated on this than a lot of other conservative movements. Well, you actually, what you were starting to say before, I think you hit the nail on the head that we've had advances in science and technology. And so, for example, um, our understanding of ultrasound, our usage of ultrasound is unlike, you know, 10, 15 years ago. We can see and hear a beating heart so early now. And as well, there's been so many advances in terms of research, both on the negative side, post-abortion syndrome and the physiological consequences of abortion on a woman, as well as the positive, you know, fetal development, fetal pain, all of these different things. And so science and technology are 100% on the side of life. I always believe that really our goal in the pro-life movement, we don't have to have, you know, the most persuasive arguments ever because we really just have a beautiful issue and we have to show it for what it is. And that's really what science and technology do. So I think that's one thing. Um, another, uh, similarly, kind of bringing it into the light, the partial birth abortion debate um, it really brought it into the light in terms of media and learning what the actual abortion procedure is and does. And that was a pretty pretty awful thing. People don't want to think about that. And that we saw opinion polls change a whole lot after that debate came before the Senate floor. So, um so, you know, I think those are part of it. The other uh, young people, they, you know, the young people know the truth, and it's, it's like true issues speak to them. And they are so enthusiastic, and they're, you know, ambassadors, basically, for human rights issues, for true human rights issues. And it's my belief that this is a human rights issue of today. So I think for all of those reasons, that's why we've gained in public opinion, why more Americans are pro-life now, and I think why young people are more pro-life. Yeah, there's so much, so much great stuff to respond to because I know when we do our coverage at Breitbart, I don't like to show the gruesome photos. I like to uh, show the, I, I like to show the beautiful photos of the fetus in the womb. Mm. Uh, and and it's very hard to you talk about partial birth abortion, and that makes people think about what is the cutoff, when is it inappropriate to have abortions, and then you think, well, there's a heartbeat at 18 days, and there's fingernails at three weeks. It's kind of it's, it, it makes it tough to make the case the more developed we get in science, and I love that conservative group using science to their advantage because we're so often called anti-science. I mean, my wife's in medical school now. I, 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 I took a lot of science growing up, and it's just wonderful to see a group use that to the advantage of the conservative movement. Um, Gene, before we let you go, we only got a minute here. What I wanted to ask you is that what are you hoping to accomplish in a nutshell on the 22nd for the March for Life? Well, one thing that we're hoping is just to do a little bit of educating on our theme. This year, it's Every Life is a Gift, and our underlying theme is uh, babies that receive a poor prenatal diagnosis are aborted at a disproportionate rate. We know that any abortion is one too many, but and the average abortion rate in our country is about 20%, so 20% of babies are aborted. For little ones who receive a Down syndrome diagnosis before they're born, 90% aborted. We are, we are eradicating people with disabilities in the United States. So this year, we're really hoping to educate quite a bit on that. Yeah, and it's interesting that you're able to move on to that because there has been a tick down in the abortion rate, uh, and so it's the sort of thing where I think it shows that you made some progress that you're moving on to that sort of an issue instead of just abortions in general and post-birth abortions. So, Gene, one more time, where can we find you online? Marchforlife.org, and then follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and other social media outlets. Follow Breitbart on Facebook, too. We'll be covering the March for Life on the 22nd. Thanks, Gene Monahan. Thanks so much for having me, Alex. Back after the break.